So number one, I wanted to show you an idea of something that you have previously seen that I thrifted at Goodwill. It was this candle holder and let's see, where did it come from? This one came from, I think it came from Hobby Lobby. Um, at any rate, it came without these votive cups and I found these great votive cups on Amazon, you guys. They came in a package of, I think, was it 12 or 24? And they've got subtle different designs on them, geometric designs which I love because they cast great shadows when you burn your votives in them. Now, they fit in here wonderfully. So one thing to look for now at your thrift stores, anything where you can put uh, votive candles in it and elevate it by using some of these. And I will, I will put a link so that you guys know where I got them. Um, they also have, I think, a real Halloween-y vibe to them because they're black and gold. And I'm thinking that I'll probably get some orange colored votives so that when I burn them, it will illuminate kind of with that kind of scary, spooky Halloween vibe. So that is my number one thing. If you go to the thrift store, look for something that can hold votive candles that you can then kind of upgrade with some very unique votive cups. Okay, since we're talking about illumination and candles, you guys know I love to burn candles in the morning. I bet you guys do too. That's my question of the day. Are you someone who really likes to burn candles or even if you use faux candles? If you find that they really up the coziness ante of your home exponentially by burning candles. I burn them to meditate in the morning. Um, I'll burn them throughout the day. Obviously, I am very, very cautious about uh, never leaving them untended. But that's my question for you guys. Do you find candles really indispensable? for creating a cozy environment in your homes? And if so, do you like them scented or unscented? So here is something that I saw. It was on a Serena Crawford feed, I think. I love Serena Crawford style on Instagram. You know how I love a large book table. And she had a large book table that was in her entryway. And on it, she just had, no, well, she had books, obviously, but then staggered up and down on the stack of books. She just had all sorts of glass canisters filled with candles. And so you can find, I don't care what kind of junk store, thrift store, flea market you go to, there is always, I think, an abundance of all sorts of glass vessels of every kind of, of shape and form imaginable. Like there are some like this that at one time they were probably a florist's vase that you got a flower arrangement in. They may have been a canister that had a broken top. Regardless, there are just so many things. There could just be a bunch of jars and you can just make a pleasing ensemble of different kinds of glass vases, glass containers, and then just put your own candles in them. I like to use all of one candle, preferably white or cream. These are actually battery operated candles. And then you just kind of stage them all over the place and light them all at once. It's so, it's just so festive, I think, and really cozy. And it makes a great fireplace substitute if you don't have a fireplace. So I am going to do that definitely around Christmas, I think. I'm going to just have a whole table filled with glass vessels that I have candles in. And if you use these battery operated ones, you can, you know, do that effect where you take some kind of greenery or a beautiful fall leaf or something, and then you adorn the glass container with it. And obviously, if you use battery operated candles, then it is not a fire hazard. You could put some just little tufts of greenery in there, anything like that. To me, the simpler, the better. 
um, so that you really see the silhouette and the shape and the form of whatever beautiful natural gift you put in there. And if you give beautiful leaves a spritz, then it helps them capture the candlelight even better, I think. So that's, that's another idea. Look for just all sorts of glass containers and glass vessels when you go to, um, when you go to your, to your thrift store. Now, speaking of leaves and foliage, any kind of, of statement making large centerpiece container that you can get that has an earthy vibe, I think makes a wonderful receptacle for these. These are just fun, you guys. I've been making, and I'll show you how I've styled them inside my home. I have been making leaf bouquets. Now, this one is still kind of dry. I need to give it another spritz, but you can see some of the some of the leaves that already have that pretty sheen on them. I'm obsessed with this kind of walnut mahogany color. It, they almost look like wood, like they're made out of wood. So I just go up and down the street and I forage for beautiful leaves. I want them to be rather intact, but some of the ones that are tattered have beautiful texture, I think. And another thing that I look at are leaves that have really gorgeous folds to them. So if they have a very interesting, well, none of these want to come out because I've created a bouquet with them, but some of them have really beautiful folds that almost looks like draping on an outfit or a skirt or something. And it's just a fun, it's just a fun thing to do when you forage. And then just put them together with a piece of florist wire or with a tiny little rubber band. And then you can set them. This happens to be a very dusty spittoon. I don't know if it's vintage, old or not, but it's just an old brass spittoon. And then you can find some gorgeous, this is, this is a real magazine thing right now. Just find some gorgeous branches, sticks, any kind of, of woody cuttings. And then you can put, put a beautiful bouquet of leaves in there and it's gorgeous, especially if you're doing it indoors and it's not windy like it is today so that these blow all around. Now I've just got, I'm like I say, I'm obsessed with this walnut color right now, but obviously you can get all sorts of beautifully colored maple leaves, ginkgo leaves um, in gold, in all sorts of uh, cardinal, uh, traditional autumnal colors. So that's kind of a fun thing to do for a very, very quick and easy arrangement. Now, if, if you're like me and you go through large quantities of wine, um, or if you're like me and you do lots of spaghetti dinners and things of that nature, then this might be a fun thing to look for at your thrift store. So these are those Chianti bottles that come with this straw. There's probably a, a, a real specific term for it. I don't know what it is, but this, this kind of straw casing. I found these at a thrift store. And if you can't find them unfilled at a thrift store, then by all means, buy them filled at a liquor store or at your favorite wine store and repurpose them by getting some of these color drip candles. So when you burn them, it drips that beautiful multicolored wax all over these Chianti bottles and it makes such a fun, uh, a fun thing to decorate your spaghetti dinner or your Italian dinner when, when you entertain or just for the family. So growing up, Periodically, my mom would set the table with a red and white checkered tablecloth with, for my whole massive family. I have nine brothers and sisters, and she would set the dining room table, and she would have candles like this on the table with some of these multicolored waxed dripping. Um, just, I, I just loved the way it would cascade down the side. And then we would all get a little bit of red wine with lots of 7-Up in it. And we thought it was really very festive. And I think it was a, a fun thing that I remember to this day. So this is a very hygge kind of fall thing to do if you like to eat lots of pizza or spaghetti or ravioli in the fall. Okay, here's another idea. 
that was inspired by my friend Emily at Ellen Ga at Eleven Gables on Instagram. She has a fabulous coffee bar with one of those really big fancy coffee machines and everything. I do not, but I thought this would be so fun. I was talking earlier in another video, we'll put a card up about planned spontaneity. And I thought, okay, there are ways to plan spontaneous things. So if you've got your, uh, your kids, your grandkids, anybody over, if you're entertaining and you're serving waffles or you've got your own coffee bar or anything along those lines where you have things like cinnamon sugars or cocoa powder or uh, nutmegs, anything like that, that you would sprinkle into your coffee, onto your ice cream, onto your waffles, then it would be really fun to take some of these, just, these are so endearing, I think. These were bottles that were used for club soda or tonic water or something like that. I got these at a thrift store, but I recognized the bottle. And then I just got some corks that form fit the top and I thought, okay, you could put cinnamon sugar in here, nutmeg, anything like that, loose teas, you could give them as a trio for a gift. You could set them on your coffee bar or your tea bar. I think that would be so fun. And then if you wanted to give them as a gift, then you could just put your own little tag suspended from some jute or something on it. You could describe on the back what the contents were, and I think that would just be such a fun little gift. And I found these at the thrift store. Another thing that I think um, it, as a category is something that I look for when I go to the thrift store. I've talked a lot about l always looking for things that are metallic, like this votive, votive holder, or things that are wood of organic materials. But now I find that I've, I have expanded some of those categories to include things that are a certain shape. And right now I have found anything in kind of a long rectangular shape so practical and so, uh, so useful around the house, whether it's in the bathroom, um, on the back of your, your toilet, or if it's on a narrow shelf in your bathroom, but any kind of narrow baskets or containers like this, I think are wonderful. So this was at the thrift store. And then I found just these three glass dishes. Since I, I was at the thrift store, I could just use this as my template, as my guide to see which of the thrift store dishes would fit. And these three did. And this would be perfect, you guys, for, um, for Taco Tuesday, for um, if, you're, if you're making nachos and you want all sorts of different kind of salsas and things on them. If you're serving, a lot of times I have a very special Mexican casserole that I serve that we always serve with lots of different sauces and things. It would also be great if you are doing roasted weenies or things like that outside by your outdoor fireplace, or if you're on a picnic, you can take this, you can put your ketchup, your mustard, your relish, your chopped onions, whatever in there for your hot dogs. I think that would be really, really fun, would fit into a picnic basket. It would make a great housewarming gift or hostess gift if you were going over to somebody's home. There's just so many different ways that you could use this. If you're baking cookies with your grandkids, you could put all sorts of different colored sprinkles and things in here. So anything that is rectangle, rectangular and that you could put little tiny individual containers in, I think is absolutely brilliant and is very hygge-ish, hygge by the fire. So speaking of roasting, hot dogs, sausages, it's almost Oktoberfest time, marshmallows, s'mores. Here are things that I have seen a number of times at the thrift store. And these are kebab steaks. So if you see these, then you can prepare for spontaneous celebration by having a whole setup dedicated to nothing but s'mores. So get your rectangular container or a basket, put some of these 
shish kebab spikes in them and that way you could use them. Now you'd have to be careful because these will heat up for marshmallows, but nevertheless I think they're still long enough that you could use them uh, to make your s'mores, to put your weenies on, to make shish kebab. You could do all those sorts of things and you could have it all ready to go. Uh, what's that expression? prep a -porte? Uh, ready, ready to wear clothing. This is uh, prep a uh, entertain or <laughs> prep a decor or prep a higgy where you have all of your things already ready to go so you can do something that is really fun indoor or outdoors. Now my husband knows, uh, well there's many ways obviously, that he knows that it's fall and my kids did too because he would say, is it time for the nut bowl yet? And I love to have a nut bowl for whole nuts out in the fall. Now I have not seen whole shelled nuts out yet, but it is something that definitely is always on the table in front of the fireplace in between our mom and dad chairs. As soon as it's the season for nuts that you crack and consume yourself. You can oftentimes find these little nutcrackers these little nut picks at thrift stores. You definitely, I've often seen these nut bowls, but it doesn't have to be a dedicated nut bowl. It can be any kind of bowl that you find beautiful. Fill it with nuts, get some of these off of Amazon or from your local thrift store. And it makes a really fun, wonderful gift, I think, as a hostess gift, as um, just a, as a surprise gift if you're visiting someone. I love that idea and I think also if you're of a certain age like I am, these nut bowls hold special memories because we always had them growing up. So I think that's really a fun idea, a fun thing to look for and definitely is very hooga-ish as fall arrives. Um, another thing that I think is great for for centerpiece styling. I had this in my cabinet and as I was going through things that I was gonna to take to the thrift store, I had one of these wire frames that holds whatever you want it to hold. And sometimes you can find maybe not this exact same thing, but something similar that could be used to create kind of an indoor topiary or any kind of fall decor topiary. And you can use this all through the seasons. I can tuck just a leaf underneath it and it immediately upgrades some of these baby boo pumpkins. If you're having an apple tasting party, you could put apples in here. I've got some dried pomegranates. As I was segueing this and transitioning it from fall to winter, I would have maybe some of these, these uh, dried pomegranates, other kinds of dried fruits. I would probably tuck arborvita or some kind of conifer underneath here. It would be, I think, just a a really easy, fun way to make a centerpiece. You could put a saucer on top, you could have these pumpkins below, and then you could use it um, on your buffet table with little uh, Rice Krispie treats or pumpkin squares, something like that on top of this. So it's both functional and it's pretty. And again, you don't have to find this exact thing. Quite often there are just wire frames that have been used for other purposes that you could repurpose as some kind of fall centerpiece. Um, I just think it's a really fun way to get your creative juices flowing. Something else that I like to do, and this will be my, my last thing is, and this is like thrifting your neighborhood. So a lot of times people are having garage sales at the church up my street. There is a woman up there who frequently just puts out table, tables where she sells, oh, just different kinds of things. And she was set up last weekend. This is a woman that's become, of, become a friend of mine because she walks in the neighborhood all of the time. She had a brain aneurysm and she was mending and healing and I used to see her walking all of the time. 
and she would always wear these distinctive turbans that I loved. So we became friends because she would walk by the garden. And I noticed the other day that she was set up outside of her church just a block away and she had a whole table full of costume jewelry. The kind of thing that when you're out walking you sometimes see set up in church parking lots or just just wherever. And it's a fun way to thrift and I and it was getting kind of hot because it's been unseasonably warm and she was starting to put her things away and so I stopped and I helped her because it was way too hot for her to be doing that on her own. Anyhow, I helped her put her things away and I, there were a couple of pieces I found and I said, oh, make sure to save these for me. I don't have my wallet with me and I'll get them from you later. And she showed up the other day gifting these things to me because I had helped her put, um, put some of her things away. And here's just two of them. This is a wonderful bracelet. These are metallic beads, but I think it looks especially nice with my ensemble today. This was one of the things she gifted me and this was something else that I just loved and I had I was just instinctively drawn to them but I honestly I didn't really know what they were and she had to tell me and they were just these little vintage jeweled clips and I wasn't sure at that point because I hadn't examined them closely if they were clip-on earrings or what but no they are clips and she told me that when you wear like shoes that are loafers or things like that, that you clip these on the tongue of the loafer and it embellishes them, I guess like Louis the 15th or something. But there are different ways, different uh, kind of inspired ways you could probably use them. And I think it's just so fun if you had on a real frilly collar, putting them both, they kind of like collar stays or something. If you know what these are called, um, if there's specific terminology, then I would love to know because these are just beautifully vintage. I can see using them on one of my hats, all sorts of ways that you could use these. And I think they're just beautiful. Okay, I'm in the seasonal area right now, Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and I'm just gonna look at a few things. I don't know what these are exactly. Do you think maybe these are placemats, Stuart? I don't know what they are. It might expand, but this is kind of fun. And the thing about this, this thrift shop, you have to do a little research before you start looking. Everything is 50% off of the marked price. And apparently the price is determined by how long it's been here. So it may be marked down and then you take the half price of the lowest marked down uh, cost. These are kind of fun. And if my kiddos were still at home, and if I was gonna be home more around uh, Halloween, I might look at those because I think you could do something fun with that. And always I look at things that have spray paint potential. I've got a lot of things in bags. Uh, like something like this would be half of $4.98, so that would be roughly $2.50. If you are just starting to set up a household and you're wanting to get things that you'll be using in the future, this is, I'm thinking about now like people in their, their 20s and 30s, a Thanksgiving platter like that that could be used for multiple things would be a good buy. Um, really, I am getting a little bit more into blue and white, so this would be kind of fun if you were into it. Well, I know who that would be a perfect Halloween gift for. Or What's ball that? Or the blue and white pumpkin. Who's that, me? It's Mr. John Turman. Oh, Mr. John Turman. Wouldn't that be? You know what? Maybe, well, I was going to say, if this had a Christmas motif, except I won't be seeing John before before then. So I think I'm going to well, put that I'm going to put that back, but Stuart, that was the very that counts, I, guess. I know, it's very thoughtful of you. So there's a lot more things over here. Again, I might be more interested if I were going to be uh, if I were going to be in town. These are the kind of things that I don't do lots of scary decorations around Halloween, but if I wanted to decorate my bar or something, this would be a really fun thing if I were going to have a Halloween party. These kind of things I think would be really fun. Um, what's this? There's a ceramic 
turkey. Again, I look at things for spray paint potential. Um, again, here, now see, Stuart, I'm backing you up, I know, because I just saw this. This would be really fun. I, I could definitely see uh, doing something with this, planting something in here, maybe a succulent. I might have to spray paint that. You could puncture a hole in the bottom for $3.98. This would be roughly $2. Okay, this could be really fun if you wanted to give somebody um, a fun little Halloween gift. Or you could fill it with candy. Stuart, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't think I need it, but it is kind of fun. Okay, let's keep going. This garland has kind of a retro vibe and it would just be a dollar. So that would be something to think about even for gift wrapping and stuff. I think I'm not, I'm not gonna do too much of that kind of thing today because whatever I bring home, I have to put away. Um, okay, we may have our first, our first strike. Okay, yes. These shall be mine, the Topiary Queen. I am thinking there's three of them, and I love things in threes. Okay, let's see what this is going to cost. So this one, four ninety eight. So this one would be two fifty. This one would be a dollar fifty. So I'm at like four. Am I at four dollars, Stuart? Sounds like it. I think four dollars. I didn't really hear the numbers. I'm gonna put these in my cart. And, and I've got a big one. Now, I can see these in a myriad different places. And what I think, okay, in this one, four ninety eight, two fifty four. dollars So for six fifty, dollars I get these three. And these, look at these pretty closely, Stuart. So what I think I will probably do is maybe or maybe not remove put some of the leaves, yes, and put real uh, ones in. And I will fix any abrasions on here. These could be oh so elegant. What do you think? It's a, good, it's a Linda idea. It is a Linda idea. It's topiary. So of course it's Linda. So I've got three of those. Maybe we should, I don't know if, we're, if our math is good enough, Stuart, but maybe we should do a, a try to keep a count. Okay, I've spent $6 so far. We can call it six and go from there. We'll call it six. Now, this wreath, Though I don't think I want it. This is the kind of thing when I say you could deconstruct it. Because look, this has great stuff in it, Stuart. So this was $6.98. So this would be $3.50. And for that, look at how many of these golden gourds you could get. Some pine cones that are gold. Lots of foliage. Foliage. I don't know that I would use it as a wreath, but it's got lots of deconstruction potential. And again, even if I never used this again, I could just re-gift it. And for three dollars, what do you think? That's pretty nice. Pretty good. Okay. Now, as always, I'm going to put these stuff in my car, this stuff in my car. But you guys have to check till the end to see what really makes it makes it home with me. And there's my question of the day. When you go thrifting, how much stuff that you put in your cart, what percentage actually goes home with you? I would say for me, it's usually about 75%. What about you, Stuart? Okay, I let's... Mean, like if, it, if it makes it into my cart, typically it's being purchased. It's probably my truth. Okay, <laughs> so this is a thing. If I were setting up, again, a new household or a second household or a vacation home, I would do that Martha Stewart from White Wall of China that she did in her house in Maine, and she just had one whole stage area in her kitchen that was nothing but just different kinds of white china. And it really wouldn't matter if it matched or it didn't match. But look at how great these would be for individual eggplant parmesan, which I made the other day, Stuart, or little lasagnas, or, and these would be $2 a piece, 
and we have two, four, six of these. What do you think? Should they stay or should they go? It's, I mean, the way you describe it makes it sound right. Okay. But I have a weird feeling you could do that with anything. <laughs> well, maybe yes, maybe no. Sneaking suspicion. Sneaking suspicion. Okay, so that would be, what did I say? Two dollars and there's six of them. That would be twelve dollars. That's pretty pricey, Stuart. But we'll see. Okay, now look at these. I don't know what I would do with these, but if you were visiting from Oklahoma or something. Is it like a soap holder? It's what? like, I don't know what these are supposed to be. I don't know. Oklahoma something. Okay, um, Best of category, whatever they I mean, were. They on the wall but the that, on that, but that could be, that could be something. Nobody smokes anymore, but I guess they could be ashtrays. Here's some great, just simple Standard white mugs. Yeah. Two, four, six, eight. A whole set for a dollar a piece. Not a bad deal. You might think about that for Julia. University of Oklahoma. Um, oh, another category I always look at is is glassware. Now this, I, this is something I might deconstruct and remove him from the base and use that for like at Christmas time you could put a wreath around its head or definitely, definitely at Easter. So see what I would try to do is detach it. It's pretty heavy. But again, I'm not in the market for that kind of stuff today. So be gone, be gone. These are sweet, sweet right here. Now something else that you, you probably kind of want to do is, is when you are approaching these stores, look through the window and see if they've got some things on display because a lot of times they'll put what they perceive to be their best items in the, in the window. Okay, this is a great idea. I talked about having more blue and white in my house and it may be even informing my Christmas decorating and look here. Now I don't know that this little blue and white <laughs> bear is my taste, but if I wanted to decorate a tree in all silver, whites, blues, look at all of these. Ooh, these are beautiful. And these would be half of that. So these are marked $6.98, roughly $3.50. And they've got them in right here. These look like maybe a little bit like mercury glass. And look here, Stuart. They've got, and I always like to use big and small ornaments. So these are in different colors too. $4.98, $2.50. I'm not sure. What do you think, Stuart? I mean, they kind of fit the bill. They kind of fit the bill. Is there anything that's more And look, there's red ones too. And red is historically what I have used in my house. I'm, I'm not sure about this. Stuart, I'm going to think about this and we may come back, okay? Deal. Okay, so we're almost at hygge season <laughs> where candles become a priority and these are really good votive uh, candles, but they also have a nice lip on them. So you could put wire around that, you could suspend them somehow, but these are really good votive candle holders and these would just be 50 cents. So I think I'm gonna go for these because at some point, Stuart, we are going to do a late night walkabout in my backyard. Are we not? Yes, we are. Okay. I lost Let's you for a see, second. Let's see, where we will have lots of candlelight. Now, this is what I was talking about. Because my toffee looks pretty scrumptious just in a paper bag but it would be ever so much more elegant if I put it in a cut glass bowl. Like this one is just $1.98, that would be a dollar. 
So for a dollar, I could put my candy in here, cover it, and give this to somebody for Christmas. Would that not be wonderful, Stuart? <laughs> and likewise, I could do this one, and these two kind of match. I could do his and hers candies. Any of these, all of these bowls, like this one, $2.98, that would be about $1.50. And, you know, glass containers like this are ubiquitous. You'll find these at all thrift stores. Look at this one. It's footed. This would be a fun one. And this one would be less than a dollar. <laughs> okay, good idea, Stuart. What do you think? Good idea. And then sweet little saucers like this. I love this detailing around the edge. These would be great as saucers for your potted plants if you wanted them all to match, and there's four of them. I like this bowl too. This one would be a dollar. Okay, we'll come back and check this out, Stuart. There's lots here. I'm not worried somebody else will pick them up because there's so many. So let's go to another part of the store and then I'll come back and get that last so it'll be sitting on top and not the bottom. I'm trying really hard to stay out of people's way, Stuart, because this is a pretty busy place today. I've actually found a couple of things that I've moved to the end of the aisle. Now, this is something that, again, if you're moving into a new apartment or whatever, it's really beautiful dishes or plates like this. I like this one because it's got some texture to it. You could almost see getting this at an art festival, but like on a dresser, this is very West Elmish. This is the kind of thing that you would see sitting on a post, uh, um, a, a post century modern bureau or something like that. This one would be a dollar, but it could capture, it could hold your keys, your wallet, things like that at night. And I think it could be really, really beautiful or an, at an entryway on a chest of drawers or a sideboard. This could be really beautiful. So I think that's kind of a fun idea. I'm not gonna get it, but I think it's a great idea. Something else, since, since I am looking for vessels, I was just talking with a woman and we were trying to decide if this was metal or ceramic. And I think it's metal. And this would be about $3.50. Now this says stone, so I'm thinking it may not be metal, but if you were someone who made like roasted nuts or Chex Mix or things like that at Christmas, this would be a great container to put it in and gift someone. And again, would look good sitting on a man's dresser to hold his hey, debris of, of the day. always drawn to anything footed. This is just beautiful for people like those kind of aqua tones. This is $2 and you could fill this up as with fruit or flowers, put a flower frog in there and do a really gorgeous arrangement. And I think this could be, this could be stunning. Or for Christmas, for Christmas, you could put some of those blue balls in there with some greenery. It would be very, very pretty but I don't need one more footed thing. That falls into the category of I need it like a hole in the head. Okay, Stuart, let's do this next section. And then definitely this is gonna be a two video project, I think. So we'll do this next section, which will kind of complete the housewares and the, and the holiday portion of this thrifting adventure. And then we'll save the second half, maybe for another video. When when should we post it? A Friday and Friday or we'll consecutively? Well, we'll think about that as we peruse this next area. Lots of purses. I don't see anything that... That gold one stands out. Though. This gold, I know. If you were... I, I, it drew my eye too, Stuart, and I think even though it wouldn't come home with me. It's kind of fun, bueno. Looks like a skirt. Yeah, I, I can definitely see somebody bohemian kind of doing this, or if you if you needed something for a Halloween costume. It looks like a Peter Pan skirt. Or, or yeah, there you go. And, and 
typically, Stuart, I, I don't buy footwear at thrift stores. You, you never know what kind of things have been in, <laughs> in people's footwear. Look here, lots of wreaths. Now, this is not my aesthetic, but boy, I can see how lots of young people would head straight for this. I definitely can see how this would be very, very fun for somebody. And this one, okay, had been 998, 50% off that. This one would be just under five dollars. That's pretty good, Stuart. Pretty good. This would be cute on Julia's apartment door. Yes, it would. At Christmas time. Now I am replacing some of my ancient cookware that has needed to be replaced. You know, Teflon coated skillets and things that are scratched on the bottom. Yeah. So and and because I I have been doing. A little more baking, have I not, Stuart? And you, you've you been have. eating some of the cookies that I've made. I'm gonna eat one when I go to your house if they're still safe. Are you kidding? Those were long gone. Once you left, Hubs went at them, and they were gone in short order. I need to make another batch. Uh, now, if if you were wanting to set up like year before last, I think, I got my son Jamie and his new bride a bar cart and I tricked it out with all sorts of barware and stuff. And this is a great place to look for barware. Even if the barware doesn't match, you just get different sizes for highballs and different kinds of drinks. How fun would that be, Stuart? Fun. Really fun gift idea. Very, very fun. Got too many glasses at my house. Well, you could even do the same thing with glasses you already have. Just take something you already have and transform it into a gift idea. I used to do that all the time when I was working displays. I would try to think of how I could use different things for different purposes. Okay, this is really good. And you know what, Stuart? Mini muffins, that would just be. That's the kind of stuff well, she really likes. A dollar. <laughs> a dollar. A dollar's pretty good. Dollars, you know? Dollars now, dollars lots of people use this for storage. So if they're, if they're storing like paper clips and thumbtacks and things Separate like that for office storage, or if they make jewelry, they use it for beads or uh, just different things like that. But I think this might be good just for its intended purpose, which is making muffins. I know, for. what a novel idea. These are, this is really good heavy earthenware. Is that stone or what's that? Mm -hmm. It sounds like stone or something. Now look, if you need to replace your coffee pot, they've got replacement coffee pots here. And by the way, I, when I shop, I'm just shopping for myself and for, for different ideas and for gifts and things. But a lot of people shop apparently to resell. And there's lots of videos on YouTube about what to look That's for. And one of them is to take something like this and then deconstruct it and then they sell the individual parts. I don't know where they sell them, on eBay or Facebook or wherever. Sounds like a lot of work. Here's some really... Okay, see, this would just be so fun to trick out. I love barware. I do, too. That's why I have so much of it in my house. I don't know what that says about me, but I do love barware. It's ridiculous. And I love a good whiskey. And all this stuff, you know, you can run it through the dishwasher, and it's as good as new. Okay, here's the type of thing. I don't need it today, but this is the type of thing that I'm always on the lookout for. So you could put a bowl in the center with chips, and then you could put different condiment bowls along the side. You could put a pineapple in it here, and then put some foliage and greenery around it with lots of different fruits and things on the side. All sorts of potential, either way, upside down or this way. Okay, something else I'm always on the lookout for, because I don't really know where to find replacements. 
but I love these hurricanes that sit on candle holders. And you might remember that a larger version of this, Hubs broke recently. <laughs> and I didn't know where to find another one that was identical. I came up with something. But I really like this, the elegance, the old world elegance of this. There's something that's both classic and modern about it. And likewise, this, if I just want to stick this in a regular candle holder, something like that, then I can, and I can just use a votive. Here's a couple more over here, Stuart. But these are plastic, so that doesn't trip my trigger. But I do think, I do think maybe these two, so I'm gonna put these in my basket. Now, let me start out by showing you the things that I got yesterday at Goodwill great scores in like five minutes or less. Okay, so I love this time of year. I've really been inspired by some of the stuff that I have seen on terrain, which is the gardening arm of anthropology. Nobody styles things like terrain does. I just love their, I, I love their site. I love their shop. I love their work. And this has very much of a terrain vibe to it, an earthy urn that I could use inside or out. Now here's the, here's the thing, you guys. I got this, look here. I got it for $4.99 and the price tag was still on it. It was $39.99, close to $40 at Hobby Lobby. It is still in pristine, collect, uh, pristine condition, doesn't even look like it's been used. It would look brilliant in here in my, in my bedroom somewhere. It would look great outside. You guys might give me some ideas on how to style it. I, it would also look great on a stand and have a real anthropological earthenware vibe to it. So I love this piece, perfect for fall. I also got this ceramic piece, which I think looks so expensive too. And together, I think they make a wonderful composition. This was, let's see, this was $2.99. I don't know how much it was originally, but it has very much of an artisanal quality to it and, and almost uh, a Japanesque quality to it. So it would be very, very striking, I think, with a simple leaf or a simple branch or something in it. So these were my two scores. I might also use these as gifts or something. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but I fell in love with both of these. Did I still equivocate about whether or not to get them? Yes, because I equivocate about everything I bring into my house now that I'm trying to do a house redux and uh, really reduce a lot of the stuff that I have. But I loved those. So those just may be, those may be gifts. I'm not sure what. I will, of course, keep you guys posted. And in the next few days, by the way, Stuart and I are going to try to really put a lot of images in the community tab. We have not been good about that lately. So if you are a YouTube member, I promise you we're going to catch up. And I gave Stuart a bunch of great old photographs of what my garden looked like before. Um, there's some flashback photos that I think you guys will be interested in that he's going to scan and he'll put those in the community tab. Okay, so here's the other thing I got. I've really been in the 60s and 70s vibe uh, thing lately. And look at these. Are these not great? I am channeling my inner share. I think these are so, so fun. Look at the wide legs on them. I just think it's, these are so, so fun. I could wear it with this top and a great big old sun hat. So yes, it's, it's a little bit past season for these. Um, but if I go to any beach place over the winter, which is probably not very likely, if not, I can save them for next year. But these were all of 549. And I just think they are so, so fun. So you guys give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on them. And a lot of times I, I don't try things on when I'm there. I'll just go ahead and buy them and bring them home and try them on at home. And most of the time they fit. Um, so I, I love these. I think these are really fun. Stuart, do you approve? Do these have kind of a 70s vibe to them? I can just see them with great big bangly fun earrings. Stuart's laughing at me. Okay, now some more almost seasonally appropriate things. Look at this great faux fur vest. 
So I'm always looking for things that I can wear um, in Colorado or when I go places that are cold. Isn't this a fun vest, Stuart? It zips up to the top and I'll put it outside. Oh, sorry, I, you can't, Stuart's going, no, okay, you covered up your mic. Sorry, guys. Um, anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, I love this. I would like to know how you guys would style it. I think I would style it with some skinny jeans and tall boots, um, maybe a black turtleneck or something, but I would love to know how you guys would style it. This was so fun. And this is one of those kind of pieces, you guys, I could wear it a handful of times and I would get my value out of it. And I don't, I think this one was also probably about, oh, here we go. Let's see, oh, this was expensive. This was $11.49. I really went over the top on this one. But I think it's so much fun. Very distinctive. If I had gone out and tried to find something like this, I couldn't. I like anything that has a collar that stands up. Um, you know how I always flip up my collar, so I love this. I hope you guys like it too. Okay, this is also so fun. I would wear this with a starched white shirt with the collar popped up some skinny jeans, boots. I love the collar on it. This is has very much of a Salida Colorado vibe to it. And I would wear it with a great big fat leather belt. So do you like this, Stuart? I think this is somebody, my husband said, oh, that's so you, because I always, <laughs> I always show him my Goodwill finds. You know, some people go to expensive stores and show their husband their expensive stuff. I go to Goodwill and I show husband my deals. So I do love this. I think it would look great with a denim shirt underneath it, with a, with a starched white shirt underneath it. Let me know how you would style it. But I just, I really love this. There's no pilling on it. It's in great shape. Um, let me see what the brand is. I have no idea what this brand is. And let's see, this was a whopping $5.99. So that was a great deal. If only it had been red tag day, it was green tag day yesterday, or I would have gotten it off, I would have gotten it 50% off. Okay, this is the last thing that kind of relates to the project that we're gonna do. Okay, Stuart, here's a flashback. The tag in these is from Harold's. So those of you that are from Oklahoma, sorry Stuart, that are from Oklahoma will definitely recognize the Harold's name. Now I saw these and I swooned because I thought these were absolutely adorable. And I thought they would be cute on and I thought I could, I could squeeze into a size two and I could squeeze into them but they were a little too tight for me. And not only that, while it looks like the cut on them is, is kind of contemporary and fun, they really weren't a flattering fit. However, what I really loved was this pattern. I just fell in love with this pattern. So, for, let's see how much were these, Stuart? Here we go. $5.49, I thought this is gonna make a brilliant project because I've been looking for fabrics for this, this fall project that I've wanted to do forever. And so you guys are gonna to wanna to know what this fall project is. Well, let me show it to you. So I have had this on my bulletin board forever. And where was this? I don't even remember what this, oh, this came out of the Sundance catalog. I love Sundance clothing. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could so make those jeans by finding fabric, fabrics that I really liked and cutting them into swatches. And then I don't sew, I, I'm embarrassed to say that, but Stuart's mother does. So Stuart is gonna help with this project and maybe she'll make a pair for myself and for Julia. Would Julia like something? Julia's daughter who is, how old is Julia now? 19, I was gonna say 18, um, who's 19, I think she would like this too. What a fun project. Now, while I was there, I thought, should I take the time to find an old pair of Goodwill jeans to try this on, or should I shop my closet first? So I decided to shop my closet first to see if I had a pair of old baggy jeans that I wanted to do this on. And then I went into, I fell into a black hole. So for those of you who say, oh, I talk too much, it's because I am th enthusiastic <laughs> about certain things and I'm hoping that you guys might 
might be able to channel this same joy in some way because here's what I did. So you guys know that my younger son Jamie got married in Colorado just a little while ago. What, what you don't know and had me kind of feeling a little bit glum last week, both happy and glum, is that my older son Johnny, who lives in Singapore, he also got married last Friday. And it was in a civil ceremony that I only got to experience uh, via, you know, via digitally, virtually. Um, but we know his fiance, now wife, we absolutely adore her. And so I am a very proud mother-in-law to two daughter-in-laws now in very short order. They've been engaged for a while and they decided to go ahead and do a civil ceremony there and we'll have a big church wedding for them once uh, COVID permits. But I was feeling kind of glum. I was feeling really homesick for my oldest son. I haven't gotten to see him in a while other than virtually. So I went back into his old bedroom where he had a bunch of his clothing stored, which by the way, he will probably never wear again because now he lives in a tropical place. So he doesn't need a lot of these clothes and I'm culling things out anyway. So I thought I'm gonna shop Johnny's closet and it will make me miss him less if I'm wearing some of his clothing. So what I did was pull out a bunch of things that I might want to wear this fall. And I guess I should show you my first thing that I found were these perfect pair of old jeans, which I will cut off and probably fray. I love them because I can remember him wearing them. Now my Johnny is extremely thin hipped. Uh, he's got, he was a swimmer and he's got kind of a swimmer's body that's shaped like a V and he like his mom doesn't have much in the way of hips so I can wear his clothing. These are a little bit big on me but they're that perfect kind of boyfriend jeans bagginess that will be perfect for working in the garden and so I'm going to cut these off and I'm going to use these for my project. Do you like that idea Stuart? And then I'll think of him, not that I don't already think of him enough, but I'll think of him all of the time. And I want to see if you guys want to participate in this project too. You might have a more sophisticated vibe on yours than mine. Mine is going to be kind of loose and slouchy and kind of boho. You might want to do something that's a little bit more couture, a little bit more elevated. But I think this is such a fun project and a way to recycle old clothing and I am going to cut these pants up and use them for some of the patches on here along with some other fabric that I have and we'll get I don't know how many pairs of jeans out of it and with the remnants who knows maybe I'll do something else with it so I thought that would be a really really fun thing to do so as I'm shopping his closet I found a number of other things that I'm going to adopt in my fall wardrobe that is a twofer because I really like the clothing and because they remind me of him and he won't mind because he lives in the tropics and I shouldn't be storing, he's an adult now, I shouldn't be storing all of his stuff at home anyway. So I've got this great, where does this come from? Oh, this is a, ban a Banana Republic kind of a sweatshirt that I just love and yes it fits me so I'm going to wash it and try to shrink it just a little bit and press it and it's got a real varsity vibe to it I think I think that will be fun with a white pop-up collar shirt underneath it so I'm going to do that I found this great gap khaki jacket which also all of these were just kind of thrown in there but this will be so fun, I think, for wearing out in the garden, don't you, Stuart? With a great hat, I will press it. This one fits perfectly. I really, really like it. Hubs and I do a lot of camping and hiking and stuff in the fall, so this will be a perfect lightweight jacket for that. And then, this is kind of a funny thing. You guys know how I have my, my work pants that I get at Goodwill? You've asked a lot about them. Well, here, here is something that I'm going to use this fall. He has all of these great cargo shorts. <laughs> Stuart is so laughing at me. But these great cargo shorts with these pockets. And like I say, these fit me pretty well. So I will press these, maybe 
style these with a really cute flannel shirt for working in the garden this fall or I can go hiking in them I think they'll be great so there was this pair and this pair and these are probably let me see these are waist 30 which is a little bit big for me but nevertheless they have shrunk some I'll try to shrink them a little bit more and I'll cinch them with a tight belt but these are great for working out in the garden you guys and style them with some really fun outdoor boots that will be fun and then he also had a great pair of American Eagle cargo pants that I think I'll do the same thing to. I just think these are so fun. They're very comfortable. They remind me of Johnny. They're eminently practical. They're good heavyweight for working out in the garden with lots of pockets. So today I'm putting together a beautiful fall arrangement using some thrifted treasures that I found. And Stuart, I want to kind of reveal to people this is what I'm going for. And the star of this show are these wonderful peppers. And nothing gives me more pleasure. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it is persimmons on a branch, apples uh, still on the branch, crab apples. I just am in love with any kind of fruits or vegetables or berries that are still on the branch because I think they give you a flexibility and a drama to your arrangement that you can get out of nothing else. So you can see here, I've almost got this complete and I'm going to show you what my elements are but you'll notice this is what I am going for you can see it really takes up a center stage on my mantle but I'm going to show you how we finish it out later but first things first and let's talk about what thrifted items make wonderful candidates for this kind of arrangement well, we all go thrifting, I think, for different reasons. Some people go because they're looking for things to resell. Some, uh, some of us, like me, sometimes we go for our wardrobe, but a lot of times we're going for home decor items. And for me, the biggest category I go for or th are things that I can use typically in a seasonal way, somehow incorporating flowers or vegetables, something organic into them, that I can take something that's not such a much and really transform it into something dramatic and magical. So a lot of times I talk about different categories that I go for when I go thrifting, like metal things or uh, useful plastic things or baskets. Well, there's another category that I often thrift for. And as I talk about this category for me, I want you mentally to go through your own home and your own spaces, your own still life areas, and think what shape you would be going for. So whenever I go to the thrift store, I look for things that are long, semi-rectangular, but that are long and narrow because I have several mantles in my home and I like to decorate them for the holidays, but I also have two long rectangular dining tables for which any kind of centerpiece that is long and narrow and rectangular works great. Great. And because I like to use different kind of textures and different kind of materials, I am open to any kind of material, whether it's uh, a basket or a ceramic or metal. So some of you have seen this before. I got this at an antique store, actually, kind of a secondhand antique store. This is just along what I think of as a baguette basket. And I'm going to be using this uh, once I'm 100% on the mend to have a baguette part. Party. But I love this. I love its shape and it can be filled with myriads of things from, um, well, I just, I, it goes on and on the things it could be filled with. Like right now, I'm just spilling over with gourds and maybe dried hydrangeas would be absolutely beautiful. So this is one thing. Another material category that I always look for are ceramic plates. And I actually collect these kind of ivory colored white ones because I use them so much in entertaining, but also in my home decor. Now this would look great hanging on the wall with other similar types of items in um, kind of in a congregation above your mantle. But it would also obviously be very useful. I could just set it in, built in between two candlesticks. I could fill it with fruit or vegetables or whatever. 
whatever and it would be very pretty and I got this for pennies at the thrift store now likewise I can look at ceramics but I can also look at anything metal and quite frequently you will find metal uh, kind of saucers trays whatever like this and particularly Bang. if you are going for more of a galvanized industrial chic or even farmhouse look then this would be a great candidate again it's kind of long and narrow and more rectangular now one of my favorite things to use are baskets like this this is a wire mesh basket. I got this at a thrift store for very little. I think when I got it, it actually had a fabric liner, but I took the liner out. That way I can use it in so many different ways. I can put three pots of, say, cyclamen in it, and I can then set this in my windowsill above my kitchen sink. Another great place where very long, thin, and narrow is the profile that you're looking for. Now, this is fun. I've talked about these in the past but I don't know if I showed you so again I love this shape meets something from the garden so these are dried okra pods can you hear them Stuart aren't these fun I've told this story many times before that I saw these in a Santa Fe florist some of them were still on the branches but I actually had some cowhorn okra growing in my own yard so I came home I clipped them and I let them dry this bone color and I have used them so many different ways in the past I've sometimes spray painted them but in this case I just love that organic white color here is just a little gourd that I allowed to dry, but the, this shape is brilliant. Now here's another uh, more substantial version of that. This again, I got, I think this was maybe four or five dollars and I got this at a thrift store. I actually bought it to make an arrangement for my mother-in-law years ago. I gave it to her as a gift, but when she passed, I, uh, let's say I just returned it to myself and I've used this on I don't know how many occasions and I like the fact that this is brass so in areas of my home where I'm using more brass and a little bit more elegant look this footed metal as aged as it is yeah kind of cash pose see here it's even got some of that that patina on it I like so much this is something I would not shine but I love the way it look is it looks it's very heavy and I could plant in this or I could do a real flower arrangement in it so I love that and then lastly another category that I always look for in terms of that long narrow rectangular shape and that's things that are wooden now this is one of those wooden dough bowls that you see so many of right now this one I did not get at a thrift store but but I have seen them. This is a wonderful shape and scale for a mantelpiece. And what I like about it is it looks brilliant without anything in it, but it also looks magnificent with something simple in it. So you can see right now, I had really just um, a magnificent harvest of these icicle eggplants. I have frozen so many, so much of it. I have cooked with it. I have gifted a lot of it. And so what remained, I just thought would look beautiful in a bowl with all of my other kind of um, tone on tone items like these things that are in my dish cabinet and what I have on my mantle. So if you have a space that you frequently are transforming in some kind of seasonal way, look for a shape that matches that. And then when you go thrifting, think, okay, today I'm going to thrift for that shape. In your case, it might be like platter shaped, or it might be perfectly square, or it might be, uh, it might be circular. But look for a shape that fits into a specific still life display area where you like to create a vignette in your own home. Okay, now let's go back to my arrangement. Okay, Stuart, how gorgeous is this? Look at these purple peppers. 
These are some ze zebra tomatoes, I think. They aren't ripened yet, but look at how gorgeous that fruit is and how particularly beautiful it is because it is still attached to the stem. And what that does is it, it really serves a utilitarian purpose because then I can use that stem to secure it in place in my arrangement. So again, this is what I am putting together. And definitely my muse was these beautiful or were these beautiful peppers still on the branch, some of my yellowing eggplant, and then as a container to kind of be the canvas upon which I will paint my tableau is this wonderful metal long, narrow, rectangular tray. Some of you watched the video. Stuart, at the end, let's put up the, one of the thrifting videos where I got this, along with some of the other videos where I'm referencing, um, like harvesting these peppers and things. And we'll put those up at the end, you guys. But I got this tray. I think it was maybe $4 or $5, Stuart. It is pretty, fairly watertight, but just to make sure what I did was I placed in it, and you guys, I love these. I got these off of Amazon and I will link to them because a lot of times I use them indoors to protect my surfaces uh, when I bring my topiaries and things in. But what I did was I just placed one of them, and again, this is plastic and watertight, inside my metal tray to protect it, not that it really needs protecting because it was old and second hand, but mostly so that no water would leak out. So I placed it in here and then I put in some of this fiber foam. And I've talked about this before. This is an alternative to Moist Oasis. And we'll put a link to this too. I got this online. It is basically just kind of a wood fiber foam. Now I will tell you, I really like it and I use it in place of Moist Oasis right now or Wet Oasis, but it's, it doesn't work quite as well. It isn't quite as malleable um, and it doesn't hold things quite as securely. Nevertheless, because it's a better ecological art alternative that's hard for me to say. Eco alternative in that it's not synthetic. This is natural and I can just throw the whole thing into the compost bin when I'm finished. I prefer to use this. Now then, once I got it in and I watered it down, I really made sure it would absorb as much water as possible. Then I secured it with just some floral tape. Stuart, can you see that right here? Okay. okay. I just secured it with some floral tape so that it really wouldn't move around too much. And then I was ready to start my composition. Now I knew that I wanted these gorgeous cherry red. Is this a cherry? I guess it is a cherry red. Um, these tomatoes, these are I think the chili pie pepper tomatoes. This was an AAS. I grew these from seed. I love them. They have good strong branches. And I wanted these to be the star of the show for multiple reasons. Number one, I probably would have done this arrangement anyway. But this year, because I was unable to spend much time in my late summer, early fall garden for a number of different reasons, I really felt like I was giving short shrift to these beautiful peppers. And so I wanted to celebrate them in some way. So we harvested all of them. And look, by the way, you guys, okay, so I harvested this, all of these, these all came from my garden. You can see more of them here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in place. See how beautifully and easily it just tucks in there and supports that kind of heavy branch. And I love the way it kind of cascades over and undulates. If I wanted to do a completely different color palette, you guys, if I wanted to celebrate the purples of autumn, maybe with some purple fall foliage or something, I could do that. I could, as a base, maybe use, use some of these fig leaves. But look how beautifully they cascade off of the stem. Now, Stuart, am I crazy, but do you, can you two see the intrinsic beauty of these? They just are really, really gorgeous. It's the end of the season. If you still have tomatoes growing, a lot of the foliage has probably got all sorts of spider mite on it. It's looking less than its best. 
but you've got those beautiful cascading tomatoes, which I think are, it's just so constant spry to use these kinds of vegetables and fruits in your arrangements. And this, as I said, if you wanted to do something all in deep purples, ooh, maybe a cardinal red, uh, that would just be beautiful, I think, for a little bit later in the fall. But right now, it's more about Indian summer, but oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting all sorts of inspirational ideas with this color palette. Now, I just went outside as I was getting ready to put my garden to bed a little bit earlier this year than I normally do, and so I cut all of these. But look, at the florist, they're selling these. Now these, at Trader Joe's, these were $3.99 for this bouquet of them, but look how many bouquets I got for nothing just by harvesting them out of my garden. Now you might not have peppers, you might not have uh, tomatoes, but you might have something else that berries or fruits or is a beautiful vegetable that you could use. They might, there might be gourds, They, uh, who knows? But definitely I am sure somewhere you have something that could embellish a beautiful container like this in your own home. Okay, so I have these and I'm thinking that another arrangement with this orange Orange and maybe some Jack B. Little Pumpkins, if I wanted to go more of an orange palette, would be absolutely wonderful. Stuart, this color would look great in your house. It would, it would look great in your house. So, okay, so I, I, I really wanted to play up the reds and the greens. So before I even went to Trader Joe's to get my flowers, after thinking about what do I have to cut or what don't I have to cut, I realized that, that my garden was a little bit stingy this year because it was just so, so dry. So I knew immediately I wanted to get some of these green they look, um, I don't know what color that is, but kind of a limey green, apple green chrysanthemums. I knew immediately that I wanted to get this color and this texture to accentuate the pepper. And then I wasn't sure what else I wanted to get. So I saw some of these wonderful golden asters and I got two bunches of them. These are green dragon asters. I got these at Trader Joe's, but you could probably find something in a field, a wildflower that would simulate this same look, goldenrod or something like that. And I think it was beautiful. And again, I was looking more at the green maybe even, even than the gold. So I got some of these, I got some of these chrysanthemums, and then the other thing that I spied that I thought, oh, so much is this kind of pepper green that I'm going for, and that were that was these hydrangeas. I did not even realize. That. You didn't recognize these yet yeah, because it's very atypical, and that's one of the reasons I just love them. They're exquisite, and I think I can't remember. Maybe this bunch was five ninety nine or seven ninety nine. Now imagine, if you will what you would have to pay a florist to produce this. A lot, but you can do it just by putting these different elements together. So I started on this end and I just put in as kind of a foundation, I put in some of, let me get, get my stuff going here, Stuart some of these hydrangeas, and I'm not cutting them really long. And again, you might have dried hydrangeas in your own garden that you could use and you wouldn't have to buy any at all. And I am just removing most of the foliage. Call that free 99. Free, free 99, I like that. Free 99, okay. So over here you see that I just kind of wanted to anchor the corner with one of these hydrangeas, and I'm gonna kind of do the same here. I think I'm gonna take that guy out and anchor this corner. And I don't particularly care that it's not 100% uh, symmetrical because you'll notice that I also, and the, the good thing about this foam is you can put it in the side as well so that you can get kind of that effect of the fruit cascading out the side. But you'll notice that I also cut some of these uh, zinnias that I had growing in my garden. I didn't have, or zinnias, marigolds. I didn't have a ton of them, but I had just enough. And I didn't decide on this until I noticed that it was the perfect color echo with this golden aster. So I put some of those in place. 
And then the other thing that I noticed, oh, Kel Haror, Stuart, where are those shishito peppers? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So in addition to those chili pie peppers, I also had some shishito peppers. And typically the shishito peppers, you may be like me and you like to kind of roast them up in a wrought iron skillet with some olive oil and some really wonderful salt. But I had some of these and I like these because they're the same color but they're just, a, they're just a little bit of a different texture. So you can see I've got some of them, them in here cascading down the side. And so it's the same color, but it's just a little bit of a different look. Now, most of the foliage on here is very tired, but never fear, I don't care because I am going to cut it off. And then I'll take them and I will just kind of, at whim, just kind of stick them in here Again, so they give this look of they just kind of uh, cascade over the side, which does two things. It gives movement to the arrangement, but I also love it because it kind of hides then this plastic terracotta tray in here and some of the tape and other things like that. So then it's a matter of just filling in the rest. And this is the fun part. And a lot of times, you guys, I do this in situ. In other words, I start doing this after I've already got it in place because I am not doing this 360. If I were putting this on my dining room table, and by the way, you guys, that's my question of the day. If you were me, would you have put it on a mantle? Or would you have put it on your rectangular dining room table? Now for me, right now I'm not using my dining room a whole lot, but we are living in this area off of the kitchen by the fireplace. So I really wanted to put it where I would enjoy it. But for you in your home, where would you place it? Now see how there's that wonderful color echo, Stuart, and a little bit of a, oh, of a textural contrast. I have just enough left of these very inexpensive mums. And one thing about these mums is sometimes they're just not as flexible and as, as oh, oh, just they don't have as much movement as I like. So a lot of times I will separate them. I want a little bit of that texture right in there. So you can see it's a little bit weighted to the left, but I kind of like that. I could have done it perfectly symmetrical, but this way I kind of like the fact that texturally um, and visually it's kind of weighted at the side. I don't have many, but I've got one more. And by the way, you guys, another question for you. Do you love the smell of marigolds? Some people don't like it. And I love it. It reminds me of my first mom. And I just love the scent of it, of marigolds. So then all I really have remaining is to come back in. And, and all I did for the entirety, the, the entire expanse of this is what I'm doing now. I'm just removing some of the, the wispy, whippy foliage that's not real happy. I've got some strong secateurs. And, and I'm just trying to hit that right balance between it looking full and having enough negative space in there so that I can enjoy each individual element. Do you see what I mean by that, Stuart? If I get it too full and too bushy, then you can't see the different components of it. So if like if I sometimes put that there, then it would be hard to see the profile of those little peppers. Sure, so, you're taking the leaves off. So okay, see. yeah. So I'm taking some of the density of this up. out. Yep, limbing it up. My favorite, one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so this, because I'm trying to kind of hide this side, and I started to say earlier, before I moved on, 
that if I were putting this on a dining room table, I would make sure it looked good 360. But this, I don't care because it's only going to be faced, facing the front. So in this case, I, I'm not as concerned about that. And don't overlook the little tidbits that are left over like this, these sweet, sweet little buds that give a freshness and a joy to a container that I think you don't get without it. I've got different voids here and I could fill them in a number of different ways. I could add, you know, I could add more peppers. I can add more of the asters, but here's what I can also do. And this is my next tip. So Stuart, are you just waiting with bated breath to see what my final, what my final tip is? So anytime you're doing an arrangement, whether it's one like this or it's just a normal arrangement and you have voids that you want to fill, then I think it's really worthwhile to use whatever elements you have as, as kind of a secondary aside, where it's almost like it's spilling out over the edge and onto the surrounding area. So see how I've got these little boys in here, Stuart, and I can just tuck in different components and you can't tell. And these peppers, these will stay fresh here. This arrangement will last a good week. When they are finished, you ask, what do I do with them, Stuart? Well, I probably will chop them up and I will, and I will stew them or saute them and then freeze them because I really don't want them to go to waste. If God forbid, they get a little bit past their prime, then I can always put them in the compost pile. I'm gonna show them where you're picking these from too. Yeah, I've got a little basket here of some extra ones, little eggplants. I've got some green ones. I've got lots of these little baby purple ones, Stuart. Now people are gonna say, oh, would you do a purple version of this? Well. I know, because I'm already kind of thinking about that. <laughs> And this is kind of, this is kind of like the coup de gras. This is like the very last thing. It's always good to pick them so they have like a little hook on that because then when you get a little hook, it can kind of ideally hold it in place. I love the fact that it's got an old doorbell and it works. Hey, Hello. John, How good are you? to Come see in. you. Thank you, good sweetie. To see you. It is so nice of Hi, you Stuart. to indulge us. Okay. So first of all, can I just say, I am always so happily surprised when one of these old doorbells work. How charming is that? Isn't that great? And, and it did have to be repaired, so I'll say that, but it is the original doorbell, so. It, it, I just, yeah. I love it. I love the sound of it. I, I love too. the feel of it. It's a very kind of sensual, experiential thing that yes. I just absolutely. A little different than a, than a ring. <laughs> y yes, yes, than a home, than a, a, a new home in the right. suburbs. So. Look, I, I'm just, I, I told our, our viewers, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is maybe do this in two parts. Okay. There is it's such a visual extravaganza uh, that I'm I know everybody's going to want to really absorb and deconstruct all of your appointments and your vignettes. There's just so much to see everywhere. So we might divide it up. Okay, that works for me. So maybe we thought the old original part of the house mm -hmm. and then the add-on. Okay. And I don't know if you told your, reminded your viewers, but uh, this is in the um, historical Lincoln Terrace neighborhood, which is a, a protected neighborhood right by the state capitol. And the house was built in 1928 by a prominent um, Oklahoma City builder. Um, and um, I think I'm the sixth owner of it. Really? So it, it, it was a nice house, I think, at one point, And then I think it was a rental. Not so cool. Yeah. And then uh, the person before me started working on it again. And then I started showing spent us. 22 years working on it myself. Yeah. So, yeah. so but, you, you both showed it yes. a lot of love. And, and by the way, you were like a block from the governor's mansion. Yes, yes. The Capitol's a block one way and the governor's mansion is not even a block the other way. So. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> So if you want to drive by John's house like you guys drive by <laughs> my house, now I'm giving you a little clue to where, uh, okay. to where it is. You'll probably recognize it. This door is incredible. Yeah, there's some great details. And it, it appears to me that um, when they built the house that they probably bought a package of things. And I think the front door, the stair banister, and there are three light fixtures of the house that 
all have a similar motif on them. Um, and you used to could do that. I mean, those were the days of you know Sears homes and uh -huh. that sort of thing. And so there, you could buy things to, to use in a yeah. home that you were building to give it the character and the history that you were looking for. But the quality uh, of it. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. door is so heavy. Absolutely. I mean, so. and what's that ringing? So it's my bells on the back of the door. So. So. Well, of course yeah. you have. Of course you have bells. And, and not just at Christmas time on the back of no, your door. No, those are always there. So my um, and there's a little story about that. So I have a cousin or I have cousins who are now in their 90s that live in Nashville. And um, a couple of years ago, they had to downsize. And so I helped them do that. But they had those bells on their front door. So all my life going there, I had heard those bells ring when we went in. And so it was just a cool thing to bring to bring them to my house. That was one well, way to do you it. You know, so, I have some antique uh, sleigh bells that belong yeah. to my mom that she always had hanging by the fireplace. And I, I but I bring mine out at Christmas. You've got, uh, you've mine got are, your Well, they're on a blue cord, of course, so they can stay out all the time. Well, duh, so, <laughs> duh. And I didn't do that. He did it. So, he did it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this room. Look at the the. Um, first of all. You have a pretty fabulous canvas to work with. Yes. Well, when I walked in the first time and saw the ceiling um, with these beams and the, the boards, it just, it was like, okay, this could work. I mean, I'd been looking for a house for quite some time, couldn't find one. And the door was the first clue, yeah. came around the corner and looked up in here and I was like, oh my gosh. Swoon. Yeah. It was yeah. just like, okay, this will work. I don't care yeah. what the rest looks like. This will work. Arch doorways. Um, Tell me about the walls. Very, so, look very well, adobe, very are, Spanish. And it's just a traditional um, plaster on lath, but then they've been treated to look like um, hand adobe, you know, hand done adobe. Yeah. Um, which I, I almost positive is original to the house because it's everywhere in, in the old part of the house. Well, so. it, it is just, it's just fabulous. So I, there's just so much to look at here. I just, I, someday I'm going to come in with a bottle of wine and I'm just going to drink the whole bottle myself <laughs> and do, do nothing, <laughs> but take the time to really wander, look and demystify your, the brilliance of your layering. Now I said earlier on your porch that you are a self-professed maximalist. Yes, I am. And Absolutely. have you always been that way? Has it evolved over time? Well, this is also a story. I have lots of stories, so you may get tired of them. But um, in, I, I, I'm going to give away my age. So I was born in 1960, and my parents built a Better Homes and Gardens idea home from 1960. So it was this ranch, contemporary, you know, the very end of mid-century. They completely furnished it in mid-century modern furniture. Everything was spare and minimal and all that. And I resisted that as a child even. Um, I mean, I, I appreciated what my grandparents had. I uh -huh. loved all their stuff, you know, and, and I, I mean, that's when I started with the blue and white, even when I was probably 10 or something and started wow. thinking about that. Um, but anyway, I just went completely opposite. Of course, now I completely appreciate that I grew up in that fabulous house. Yes. And I have a couple of pieces that, um, you know, that were in it. But uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm a traditionalist and a, and a maximalist, as you say. Right. So. And, but I, I think it's important that you had the maybe the little embryon, embryonic um, hints when you were young, that I this did. might be your profession, profession later on, Absolutely. and you came by it very naturally. And did they have a starburst clock? We did not have a starburst clock. We had some weird clock, though. It was, it was, uh, there was a clock, but it wasn't a starburst. But we, uh, we had an orange sofa that was probably nine feet. Oh, we did too. Uh, oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. And then some of the accent colors were green, and that well, green and orange are two of my least favorite colors together. <laughs> Avocado like green. Both, uh, it wasn't. It was bottle green. This bright, vibrant. <gasps> really? Color. It was a pretty color. Now that's uh, kind of come back with around. Orange, and it just yeah, and I absolutely see it. But the seventies you know, version. It's not blue and white. So. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> right. obviously, this is an explosion of beautiful blue and white um you've got this popular look which i have to say i have in my home too the white slip covers is, is this just a canvas it is uh, in fact it was just very inexpensive canvas that i purchased and we had slip covers made for them yeah um, one of the things i learned um, when you have a lot of stuff sometimes you have to have some simple things mm -hmm. so having a, a very neutral upholstery with all this stuff around it you know gives you a, a silent space or a quiet space i call it um, you'll also see a couple of places in one of them, which is actually a, a continuation from outside. Um, Stuart, when you turn around and look at the chimney on the fireplace, you'll see that I didn't put anything on it because I wanted a place to uh -huh. rest your eye. Right. Um, and it's the same way outside as well. So you get this, I don't know, one of the, somebody commented they thought there should be something on the outside of the house. And I'm like, no, that's my quiet space on the yeah. outside. And I did the same thing in here. Um, and also, um, and Stuart, I'm doing this to you again, on the other side of you, I chose this, it's not really, it's not old, it's made to look old, but just again, something kind of neutral mm -hmm. and big instead of having some huge painting over the sofa. Uh, because there is, as you see on both ends of the room, a lot of confusion and So um, there's a lot of, of a, be a beautiful pattern. tension. Again, a, a great 
canvas. They help contribute to the backdrop and the canvas of it. And also the, the, a little bit the tension, the brilliant tension between large things, large uncluttered mm -hmm. things, and then the heavily detailed. <laughs> Lots of layering. Yes, uh, very heavily layered, detailed compositions, largely of blue and white. Lots of blue and white. That you have. Are these bookshelves original to they the house? They were not. They were not. That was I, one of the things. The first things I did actually when I moved here was started with those bookshelves, and you'll see lots more have happened since then. But um, this was the first place to do it. And one of the things, and we may talk about this some more later, but when you have a lot of stuff. Having bookshelves to contain it and to manage it is a really good way to show it all off. And you still get some, um, well, you've got some lines around all the stuff and it, it just kind of holds it. And so you yeah. can just keep layering um, and creating these little vignettes of things. So I think it's, it's similar to me for my potage. It's kind of like organized chaos. It is, absolutely. The stuff within the confines of the infrastructure for me, my box or whatever for you, for your your um, bookshelves, mm -hmm. it kind of contains a lot of what could be visually discordant. Absolutely. But you have it contained and so it makes sense. And the other thing is, is we're drawn to pattern. And so as humans we mm -hmm. are, and you've got a wonderful pattern of this blue and white uh, and, and textures and the way that you have, but even the way you've like composed your stack of books and things looks very intentional to me. It, it is very intentional, yes. I, I definitely have gone through and done each shelf and, and over time, I mean, it, sort of you kind of just drop things in place and then you stand back and look, does this work or not? Right. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes it does, but... Um, well, but isn't that the fun of it? it? Oh, that's what makes it great fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and makes it a dynamic thing and not a static Absolutely, thing so yes, that your, your home, even to your own eye, always looks fresh. The other thing I've noticed is, is that you didn't skimp on the, in building the bookshelves to make sure that they really look very much indigenous to the house, oh. even though they weren't, because they look formidable. They don't look like they were from Ikea or something. Right. They have the same heft, the same visual weight as the original part of the house with these fabulous windows. I love the way also that you repeated the look in the slip covers in your window treatments. Yeah, I wanted something very simple. Again, you just have to have some simplicity when you do all this stuff. Uh, if you tried to do a window treatment that covered the window or had a pattern or something like that, you would just create so much confusion that it would just all, it kind of becomes muddy is kind of the way I look at it. Um, you need something to clarify it. I think, you, yeah, I really, to cleanse your palate, Yes. I think, your visual palate, and this does this brilliantly, but I mean, for those of you guys that are blue and white lovers, oh my gosh, you are gonna wanna stop this video on practically every frame to look at things. Tell me the story, it looks very Japanese. Of the picture? Again, a thrift store find, truly. You're kidding! And I really think it came out of, of an Asian restaurant. When I got it, it was completely covered in grime. It took me a long time to get all the grease and all the stuff off of it. But of course, I love the color um, and, and you know just the scene in it. And I think it works so well with the other Asian-inspired things I have. So um, And very simple but, but it, lines. But it was against... really, in fact, and you can't see it from here probably, but the frame is really pretty cool, too. So, Can you see it? Good. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm going to say it was 10 bucks, so, you know. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Stuart's impressed. <laughs> right. Yeah, as am I. Uh, the, the value of thrifting, you just can't get those one-of-a-kind, unbelievable things well, in any place else. And this week, thanks to you, I went to one of our um, local antique stores that you did a video of recently. And oh, I hadn't been in a long time. Antique, antique Avenue. Avenue. And uh, isn't it just wonderful? Well, did you meet Erin? Well, I did. she was not there when I was there, but... Uh, I remember her old store and I loved it. And when I found out she was at this, this place, I was like, oh, I have to go again. So I was looking around and, and I'm kind of relating this back to the thrift store find up here. But I found a new piece of art that just spoke to me again because it was blue. And it was just yes. this sweet little thing. Who knows when it was done. Um, I'm sure it's some amateur watercolorist. You it know. doesn't matter though, uh, does it? It doesn't matter. But it just spoke to me when I was in there. And of course it, um, you know, and again, it was like, I think it was 40 bucks. You know, but, things have gone but up. You had, but you had, just, still, you had just the right spot for um, it. Well, I did a, little, did a little work on this wall. I had been collecting things that had not been hung. So this is something that happened recently. Um, I took about half of it down and added four pieces. So, so um, we're going to do, you guys, um, a, a, a little wrap-up because, again, I, 
I, there are so many, so many of these things you can try at home, but please pay attention to, to John. We're going to do a wrap up where you give us some of your best okay. professional design tips because I think gallery walls are so popular right now, but I think there are some ways to do them well and maybe less. Absolutely. No. Less than, less right. than well. Should, right. we, should we put yes, it that way? True. So we want to talk a little bit about you'll, that. You'll see two other gallery walls in our okay. house. So versus this very clean look, which I tend to do more, which is the geometric linearity of, ha of hanging like pieces mm -hmm. together in a way that can f frame the void of your right. beautiful chimney. So that's just, that's really just incredible. I see, don't you think that it gives a window into, into a person when you look through the contents of their bookshelves and... Uh, in fact, that book you just went to has a great title, uh, May I Come In? And of course, being in this business that we both are, um, it's the thing we want to do the most is go in somebody's house. So this is a, yeah. a woman who, um, in New York, Wendy Goodman, who went to all these houses she'd been to and put this wonderful book together um, talking about it, so... Um, yeah. It's very, I was telling you, John is not familiar with quintessence. If, if you've got to okay, watch some right. of those videos where they do that, they go into some of the, the major tastemakers of our time and they look at their interiors and it's so fun to be, it is. it's so fun to be a voyeur. Here is another takeaway, you guys. Look at the way you've got, now granted, we don't do CDs very much <laughs> anymore, my age. but, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, any variety of things that you have that you're wanting to contain mm -hmm. and store could all be categorized in that way. They look like the, they were custom made for this space. But I have found just by Googling well, baskets that fit right. this space, you can typically come up with something that and, looks and custom. And that happened before we could Google. So this was, I found one at Target that fit. And I was, so then I ended up going to five Targets to find enough because of course they only had two at each Target. So it was a bit of a trek. I couldn't just have them sent on my Amazon Prime, uh, right. but it did work out well, so. Well, I, the, another key that you're gonna discuss with us a little bit later, you, you have a very eclectic vibe. So in these bookshelves, you've got old things, you've got new things, you've got Asian things, you've got Spanish colonial things. Mm -hmm. You have a whole ensemble of different kinds of, of historical comportments that come into play you're going to talk about some tips to how yes, you how you how you make it look homogenous and consonant together with so many disparate kinds of things you and i obviously share an obsession with books almost every room of your house and every room of my house with the exception of the bathrooms look like they're libraries That's... and i'm really this is something i'm struggling with really uh, how do you call out things that... I can't. I don't. I just keep collecting. You just so keep, keep right. collecting. And you'll see, I mean, I even have duplicates of things. And I, I always think, oh, I'll give one of these to somebody that means something to me. But then at the other time, I'll think, oh, but I could take that book apart and frame all those beautiful things that are in it, you know. Right. So then I don't do it. So Yeah. Um, and the other thing with me that's a danger... Can I have three copies of that one, see? Well, I, well then you can give one of those. <laughs> right, away. I could give one of those. You away. could give that to me for Christmas. I could give that to you. <laughs> so... I was talking about my, my sons and they also, I, now I've got all of their books right. and things that they don't want me to get rid of. The other thing that my, this is my takeaway tip. <laughs> I was just looking, I, I was just saying, oh, I just looked at this book yesterday. I've got the same one. But here's my takeaway tip. Okay. If you are calling out your books and you're starting to get rid of, like right now I've got way too many gardening books and I can gift those to people yes. who are at the beginning of their gardening career. But my one tip is, and I bet you do the same thing. I, I am constantly tucking little mementos in books mm. of thank you notes, right. of photographs, of messages people have sent me, little kind of, of communication clediments that I've put in those books. Mm. And then I'm always afraid I'm gonna give a book away without salvaging something that is it. very priced to me in it. So you really have to shake yes, it. Yes, you do. Just like you get the, clean out the pockets of uh -huh. anything or underneath the cushions. I really have to be very, very careful that I empty them out. I agree with you. But on the other hand, when the book does get to 
an estate sale or the thrift uh -huh. store or whatever, and then someone else purchases it, they get the best treasures. Uh, I have yes. found so many cute things in books that yeah. I never would have known about. And a lot of times there'll be something that has something to do with that book, you know, about a person in it or whatever. Uh -huh. It's so interesting. So now at least if you do give but it away, true. that someone else benefits yeah. from it. Or so, a, 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 and, uh, and a sense of history. I yes. think that just, that real it sense really of does, history. So. Okay, now this is a weird thing, but that I love about you. John even said we could go into his bathrooms because of course your bathrooms are also decorated. Are, so. so Stuart, uh, go in and look at, you have artwork. So that's my collection of, of interior renderings. And um, some of them look fabulous, like they really date back well, to- the, the big one um, is from my cousin, and he did that in the 60s. Um, and then the one right under it is actually his living room. Um, and he, he did this, and I have all of them. He did a program for a group of people in Nashville, and he did, um, oh, I think they're 10 of these boards that he did these wonderful renderings and he had all the samples and all the stuff to go with it. Well, he kept the boards and so when they moved, they were in the attic yeah. and I couldn't throw them away. So I brought them all home and I framed this one. Um, oh, that one is just, man, it, talk about jettisoning you back yeah. to another era and so, another time. And the one that starts looking at right now, that living room was done in, I think, probably the late 60s um, and Bloomingdale's uh, decorating was the thing, this country front. And so Jay added those fake beams and did that and then of course in the 70s it got all redone so oh yeah but it's a which is probably why you're eclectic in philosophy because you love things from so many I do. different I like from, from all so the many periods. different eras i really do um and and Stuart and i are going to apologize he's doing a great job as is the camera but this is a house so it's i mean it's, we're not stage lighting right. to really do shooting is is the floor original that to is the original house? and wow. the and the wall tiles original in there i think it has got a very a, similar yeah. tile in my second in my guest bath i love that little detail on the little trim piece yes um, the uh, the problem is when some of the like the toilet paper inset when it cracks or yeah. <laughs> breaks, kind of no, hard to problems. find a replacement they are, for that very stuff. Hard, so, so Stuart, did you get a three sixty? And you've got lots of texture that's incorporated in textiles, framed textiles, mm -hmm. uh, blankets, quilts, um, loving loving this vibe. So when we get to my house, and like I love that. one thing I noticed one appointment that I need you to help me with is all of your your pillows seem to be more down filled and flat and squishy Which is, versus overly stuffed with foam with like you know i have, a, a, I have an abhorrence for those a la pottery uh, barn right. and that's how some of mine are and i need to get rid of the and there's actually stuff. i've been using a, a faux down uh, material which Gets, this one actually goes down, but the ones in the living room are done with this other, and it's a great squishy feel, and um, I love it, so it's really nice. Well, so. and then I say, and, and especially if it's faux down for those of us with allergies, right. as, as am right. I, which is one of the reasons I don't have a lot of it, <laughs> because I, I could. Yeah. Okay, this is this is just great, and so comfortable. I could, you know, I could just come in and hang out here while you're working, John. Look <laughs> well, and sometimes I hang out there when I'm working. So, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah I do thing. the same thing in my office. So, yeah, yeah it's absolutely. A, I love it. This is wonderful. Okay, so now let's come back here. And we're going to give you a glimpse over, Stuart, into the dining room, which almost has, and we're going to go in the dining room later, but it, it has a primitives vibe. It, I and think that piece of American furniture kind of causes that. And, and, um, and I'm one of these people too, when I buy furniture, I have a real hard time getting rid of it. So early in my buying, I bought a couple of um, more primitive pieces, mm -hmm. this piece in the hallway, the sideboard in the dining room. And then that, the white piece where all the blue and white is, uh, was a piece that my grandmother had built for their country home. And of course it was this ugly brown. And when I moved here, um, I brought it here and we just painted it to match the wall. So, and, I, then, and then the paint swelled the doors. So. <laughs> I just decided I would use that leather and time time closed. Okay, and that has this great takeaway, closure. Another great, another great takeaway, as oh. is, and I did this in my in my dining room, which is a Ralph Lauren glazed red, mm -hmm. and I painted an armoire the same right. color, the same red to match the walls. So that's a great takeaway tip, you guys, especially if you've got a piece of furniture that's maybe not special, right. or maybe is special, and you want to figure out a way to incorporate it into your house, then you you just make that canvas simpler by painting and, and it, it the works. same yeah. way and it be So I did that and then you know bought new knobs and then I said as I said created the way to close it so and bought a few more pieces of blue and white. <sighs> Tons of blue and white. That's <laughs> you, you, again I'll get well, away to contain something. We need an intervention. Like. <laughs> we yes, need we an intervention. Okay, can we go upstairs? Yes, let's go upstairs. 
So, Stuart, as you so, come by, notice some of the details on the banister because I think it's pretty cool. And, and um, this is original to the house, I'm going to guess. It is, absolutely. And the floors are original. Did you have to restain and refinish your we floors? We did do that, yes. Yeah. And this winding staircase, isn't it wonderful? It has a great feel with the curb, doesn't it? The other nice thing is this is older age friendly because the treads are wide mm -hmm. and not real steep. So that is just really, come on up, Stuart, and join us. <laughs> but before you do, very, very carefully, without breaking anything, turn around. So, all right, you can come on up, Stuart, come on up. and Show what I can show first. Show what you can show first because, I'll yeah, because there's really cool stuff behind Stuart and accolades to Stuart who does such a good job of well, of navigating these contorted spaces that we put him in. And without knocking anything over. That's the which, good, that's the, that's, well, sometimes we knock things that's, over, that's the but skill. usually Not they're here. in my garden. What, so the, okay, so that adds me to, that is a, to a question. Uh -huh. um, let's go in, go in here, here while, we, while we talk. For me, um, w one thing, so much of how you think about the now is what was informed by your past. And okay. I grew up in one of those households where I've got nine brothers and sisters. Mm. And I grew up in a household where if something got broken, you got in really big trouble. Mm -hmm. And I just have the exact opposite. I think everything in your house should be used. I don't care how valuable it is. I think it shouldn't stay hidden away in a closet. If mm -hmm. it breaks, that means it was loved. Right. I mean, that doesn't mean that we're careless with our things. But to me, I'm, I would be much more concerned over broken feelings than broken objects. That, be the it, only place. it very much uh, feels to me like some of the some of the bed and breakfasts in santa mm -hmm. fe or in colorado or or things where you've got special things and just wonderful layering with these are you know these are gorgeous but this is a layering thing that you can do inexpensively absolutely. and not and not just inexpensively at walmart but inexpensively at your thrift store mm -hmm. So one of the things I like to do at thrift stores is look at clothing, draperies, anything like that, if there's great fabrics of something that can be done. And, well, and that fabric on that pillow used to be on this big chair. And of course it faded. And when we took the fabric off, I actually reversed it. And there was enough, uh, there was enough oh, good fabric something. to make one pillow. So I still have yeah. my plaid. So uh, you really should pay attention to what you're throwing away and giving away. And I do if that there's with a tablecloth. The, yeah. I'll use I'll use them on the off side, side so that yeah. so it gives um, it gives you a double you know it does. A double use and, and more of a, a weathered older look. Stuart Stuart said about my house when you come into my house, you can't ever tell what's old or what's new or what's new and what's made to look old or yeah. And, and I, I guess that. that's what I love because I want everything to kind of look used and mm -hmm. loved and no, I do too. And, as you can um, see. <laughs> so. But like like this, this is the simplicity of this is just brilliant but goes so well with all of your layered stuff. Just really wonderful. And books, 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 books everywhere. everywhere. And as you said, they're everywhere with the bathrooms. And I have shelves in the bathrooms, but no books. Well, it just is, and and you do like I do. You've got them stacked everywhere. They make great little tables. Well, they do. That was too low to use the yeah. stool for a table, and some big books made it work. Yeah, for me, so. they make great little tables for topiary and they do. things, and, and they kind of frame and elevate, and lots of wicker. You've got lots of wicker. And, you know, that was a love that came from when I was probably in my 20s. You know, I just like that. And, and yeah. I, everybody, recently, there was this, in the magazines, they're all, oh, wicker's coming back. Well, I never I went away in my that. house, right? Yeah. So, my, uh, uh, some of you have seen my bedroom, and I will definitely video again, but I have three pieces of my mom's wicker in my, in my bedroom. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's, it's, it's a great, uh, again, for texture, I love it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, this, wow, <laughs> this is just like, this is what I call decora a decorating double down. Oh, really? And, okay, and so explain you... Explain that. Okay, so you double downing in a good way because what you did was you doubled down on the green oh no. of these people, which is just, I mean, remarkable. It would be, it would just be blas blasphemous to tear this stuff oh, out, no. this tile. 
And, and, and what I mean by double down is that you carry that same green over to the storage and the shelving and the trim work and everything in the best, in the best way. <laughs> Well, when I um, first moved here, of course, I, I didn't, this is not my favorite color scheme. And I painted the walls the pale yellow and all the trim was the pale yellow from the tile. And it just didn't work. Right. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm gonna own it. Yeah. And we're gonna do it green. And actually, I think this is a beautiful color of green. It just doesn't go with the rest of the house yeah. so much. But, but look at uh, that. And that detail is just oh, terrific, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it made a great place to fit art pottery and some things that don't always blend in other places. And so this is one of the few places you do see green in my house. But. The way you do it. And it's was, kind of a blue green. So it is a blue green. <laughs> the other thing is is you've continued the blue green thematic and you've introduced the blue via your artwork and some yes. of the pottery and things like that. Even the rug has hints of, of blue in it. So it, it in no way looks like it doesn't fit in here. Right. You know, it very well. Well and, and when the walls were yellow, the I covered the walls in here with blue and white china. So that's how this blue and white china thing started. And then of course the collection got much too big, so it went to the bedroom, yeah. and then I came back with the art pottery and the green, and I like it yeah. much better this way. So, gosh, this but, but they're great. These are all original fixtures, and they all really work so well. And, this uh, so reminds me of my grandmother's yeah. house. So, it's, yeah, it's great. I mean, down to just even the rest. Even the rest, right? Just, that's part yeah. of it. Yeah, so, yeah, um, it is. Just fabulous. So, Stuart, be before I started to yell at you to turn around, this was what I wanted to show, is the, the wonderful, you have so many different areas for staging, mm -hmm. which is one thing I kind of feel like I don't have in my house. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough, it's an English tutor and I just don't have enough places. Places for, to do things, right. Yeah, which may be, may be a, a good thing. And then you've got just texture. Stuart thinks that's so funny. Don't you, Stuart? <laughs> Stuart and I have an understanding that we are free to make fun of one another. Oh, I, that's what makes life interesting. Uh, I like yes, doing that. So. Yes. So, and then this would be the second bedroom upstairs, but um, my husband uses it for his yeah. office. And so he is a musician, and so these are mostly musical related wow. things and artwork and cathedrals and um, again, another collection of. Oh, and I just, yeah, just, but with a different, oh, my word, yes, definitely. He's a musician. Yes, absolutely. Look at this, Stuart. This is, this is. And in here, I'm going to, I mean, we did do much simpler bookshelves. We didn't want oh, to uh, invest them. Oh, Stuart's telling me get out of the way. Make the yeah. investment. And we wanted them to be somewhat removable so that if someone did want this room to be a bedroom again. So we did a simpler thing, although they are built. They're not, but Ikea would have worked in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'd been just fine. So. So how, how did you decide? Who got which office? They both are so charming. Well, and in different ways. Since I work at home. Since you work at home, <laughs> so, oh, so he home. doesn't work. He doesn't. Okay. Yet, no. Okay. Now Stuart's daughter. I've said this before. In fact, we were at a recital for her last night. She is a brilliant musician at mm. OCU. Oh really? Yeah. And so she would find this fascinating. Yeah. Well, I, Scott is about to retire. He is the. Um, Musician at St. Paul's Cathedral downtown. Oh wow! And so a lot of his office oh, has wow. come home because yeah. we're in that process of yeah. of moving all that. So yeah. um, by well, next year, just, everything will be here. So yeah, this is just. But you'll notice there's no organ or piano, so we don't have room for those things. Yeah. So well, you need you really need space. For you, those right, you really things. do. It wouldn't be appropriate. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Well, this um, is just this is just lovely. So I haven't asked you. How many square feet is your house? Well, the original house was about 1,950 square feet. Okay. And then we made about a 700 foot addition to the back. So 2,650 is what. Okay, look at this mm -hmm. wonderful fixture. So that fixture um, was in the breakfast room originally in the house. Um, and the fixture from here was missing. Uh -huh. And when we did, um, well, I think I just brought that up. I brought that up here immediately because I thought it looked better in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but this detail right here is the same on the stairs and on the dining room chandelier. So. Um, mm -hmm. That's what makes me think that they came in a in a package deal. Right. So. Right. In a beautiful package. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That. I would love to have known what the original was in here, because there was yes. a ceiling fan here when I got here. So. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Well, good. you know what? 
we're we're going to have to give our our viewers a bathroom break okay. or a snack break or something. So we're going to stop here because we've seen the original components of of this house and how you have so brilliantly adorned adorned it. It's just it's just incredible. So we're going to just take a break here and then you guys are going to want to make sure to go along with us for part two because we still haven't seen the redone kitchen, right. laundry room, master suite, and you're not going to want to miss it. John, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Sure.